Hey, I'm Earl Reagan with Camping Indiana, and today we're here at Brown County State Park with Patrick Halter, the head naturalist here at Brown County State Park. And today we're going to be talking about snakes. Um, it's been the subject of a lot of uh, misconceptions on our uh, Facebook page, and so we're going to talk about it and we're going to get the truth of the matter from Patrick. So, Patrick, I'm glad we're here. Um, Thanks for having me. Can you tell me about the importance of snakes in our ecosystem? Yeah, uh, snakes play a really important role in our ecosystem. They really help us take care of a lot of things, especially rodent populations, uh, things like mice and rats um, and uh, squirrels even. So these are animals that um, you know can cause a nuisance. They can carry diseases that can be transmitted to us, um, which you know, snakes don't carry diseases that right. can be transmitted to us. So, uh, but they're also helping you at your house uh, with things. Um, like a black rat snake, for uh, for an example, is a a great rat eater. Uh, we have them here on display at the nature center, and you know, for our other snakes that we might feed one rat to every couple of weeks, the black rat snake will feed double. They just huh. love to eat. They're the pigs of the uh, of the snake world. Uh, which is good for you in a lot of ways. First of all, mice and rats are the number one cause of house fire uh, in, in America, um, basically around the world. They get in there and they chew on the wiring inside right, of your right. house and causes the wires to arc. If you've heard of a, an electrical fire before, a lot of times that's caused by rodents. And so the snakes are protecting you like a firefighter and they're protecting you from those rodents. So very good. They're doing all kinds of things to help you out. Not only are they helping the ecosystem, but they're also helping. You. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to get to venomous snakes, yeah. which has been a big issue here. What are the four uh, venomous snakes in Indiana and their approximate ranges? So there's, yeah, again, there are only four. Um, there is probably the most widespread and the only one that's not on the endangered species list is the copperhead and it's uh, basically from southern Indiana all the way up to uh, just before the Indianapolis area so just south of Indianapolis and uh, all across the southern part of the state um, you'll find copperheads we also have um, Water moccasins is one that's really tough. Um, we know that there was some uh, uh, in northwestern Du Bois County was the only place we've seen uh, like a real population of cottonmouth snakes. Um, also along the Ohio River, but other than that, you're not going to find them around the state. We get a lot of misidentifications with those. There's a snake called a water snake, common water snake, that we see a lot across the state. And people think, oh, water snake in the water. It's got to be a water moccasin. Most likely, it's a water snake. Right. Well, that's, you know, uh, the water snake thing. I mean, I see, uh, you know, people, well, hell, there was a cotton mouth in, in Rockville. It's like, no, there wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I they're mean, very, I'm trying... They're very uh, isolated to just a little spot in northwestern Du Bois County and maybe a little bit across the, along the Ohio River, but we don't see them anywhere else. Okay. Well, what else do we have? We have a... A snake that occurs here in uh, Brown County area uh, known as a timber rattlesnake. They used to cover basically the whole southern part of the state, but now they're kind of secluded to just this area in Brown County and the, the several counties around us, Morgan, Monroe, Spencer, you'll find those timber rattlesnakes. Uh, they are an endangered species. And then up in the northern part of the state, there's a snake known as a Massasauga rattlesnake. Or a, it's a very small, it's like a pygmy rattlesnake. They're really, really small. Um, and they're on the federally endangered species list. You know, like a timber, right? They're on the state endangered list. But if you went to Texas, they actually hunt them there. So it just depends on where they are. Things can be endangered in very small areas. It doesn't mean they're endangered across the whole country or around the whole world. But a Massasauga rattlesnake is federally endangered. Interesting. Now, did you say that's the northern third of Indiana is mm -hmm, their range? Mm -hmm. They're up, kind of up more in that northern part of the state. Right. Now, I've seen uh, people say, well, well, we're camping in northern Indiana. There's no, there's no poisonous snakes up there. And I'm like, oh, well, wait a minute here, folks. Now, there's no poisonous snakes anywhere. Well, it's, it's true. <laughs> Venomous snakes. <laughs> Venomous snakes. <laughs> um, they are, uh, they're, 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 the way I understand it, they're there, but they're very rare. They're very rare, they're very hard to find. You know, and it's funny, we have people that are on the extremes. There are people that just 
don't want to see any snakes. They don't like them. And then we have people that come to our state parks who would like to see like a massasauga, right? Right. Um, you know, I've been to Africa before and been on a safari. And what did I want to see? I wanted to see a lion because, you know, that's an apex predator. It's a beautiful animal. We want to see that. And so there's those people that want to see those animals. And again, they're still so hard to find that there are people that have been looking for years and don't see these animals. So Okay. Um, and so if... Uh How widespread is this? I mean, how big of a problem is it, or is it not a problem, or how do, how do you view yeah, it's, that? It's not a problem. You got, here's what you have to think about, especially in today's day and age. Everyone carries around with them one of these things, right? Yes. And with that has all kinds of, they have a really nice camera on them. We have a million and a half visitors that come here to Brown County every year, right? Yep. A couple years ago, somebody took a video with their phone of a rattlesnake going across the trail. I saw that. Yeah. And it went viral. Yes. You know why? Because there's not many of those videos. Because not many people capture it. Because not pe many people see them. And so it's just important to realize, you know, they're, they're not easy to find. They're not, uh, you know, invading. We're not overrun with them here. Uh, they do exist here. We're lucky to have them. So here's one of the other things I did want to uh, just cover when it comes to these, especially these timber rattlesnakes. They're, they're actually helping us with another problem. And that is tick populations. So tick populations get really high. And ticks are far more deadly to humans than snakes have ever been. Right, right. And so we know 100% when we reduce rodent populations, we reduce tick populations, okay? Yes. Timber rattlesnakes grow to be quite large, right? They yes. can be pretty fat, girthy snakes. Yes. They can eat things that a lot of our other snakes can't eat, things like chipmunks and squirrels, uh, bigger rodents right. Right, that carry ticks. As a matter of fact, a timber rattlesnake will eat between 2,500 and 3,500 ticks per year per individual snake. Right? Huh. So they're out there getting these big rodents that are carrying these ticks around and they're thus reducing our tick populations. That's why you can come to hiking in Brown County and not get covered in ticks, right? Because we have this apex predator that's you see how that ecosystem falls, right? You reduce this thing, that means you reduce this thing, and you reduce this. So you're seeing the, the effects of having this beautiful apex predator around by the reduction of rodent populations, thus the reduction of tick populations, and thus the reduction of us getting things like Lyme's disease. And things right, like right. A Lyme disease is pretty dangerous. Yeah. So that's great. Um, now what about the copperheads? Now copperheads, there are... Uh, there are more of them. Now, here's the, the great part about copperheads, and, and all of our venomous snakes, first of all, are super docile. Uh, one of the, I think, the, one of the misnomers we get is that they want to bite you. They're out. They will find you and hunt you down. I'm hiding behind every you. tree. Yeah. Yeah. They want to avoid you at all cost. Copperheads are very little. They're very small compared to like a timber rattlesnake. And remember that these snakes can only strike half their body length, right? Right. So if you see a copperhead, the only it can only strike you half of its body length. So you got a copperhead that's only a you know, couple feet long. If you stay a foot away from it, you can't get bit, right? Right. So now there are more copperheads than there are. They're not on the endangered species list. They're still really hard to find. I mean, uh, I never saw a timber rattlesnake or a copperhead most of my life until I came here and I only see them because people tell me where they're at, right? Right. Uh, I don't see them often. I, uh, I think there's a lot of, again, misidentifications. In our heads, I think we go straight to, we see a snake, it's venomous, right? right. And that is actually a good thing. Why? Why? Well, yes. Because you avoid them. We don't want you to pick up any of our animals here. We don't want you good to touch point. any of our animals here. We, don't, we think that these animals should stay wild. So if you see any snake, the best thing you can do is it's just, it's just a, you can look at it, view it, don't touch it, don't pick it up, you're not gonna get bit. Right, right. right. Well, that's, that's, that's good to know and it's important because I think there are so many misconceptions out there about the snakes here in Brown County especially, mm -hmm. but you know, to a lesser extent, you've got, you've got the same problem down at Hardin Ridge, you've got it in the Dean Wilderness, I mean, and so I think the important thing about that is, is that the 
I don't know, misnomer that snakes are behind every tree and every rock and they're waiting to bite you yeah. and it didn't you know that's and they're that's, just they're just if not more scared of you than you are of them they don't want to get around you they don't want and you know our snakes here in indiana they they have a, a tough life you have to remember these copperheads and these timber rattlesnakes they exist in several areas in the united states like for example texas yes they have timber rattlesnakes, right? Yes. But you know the big difference between timber rattlesnakes in Indiana and the timber rattlesnakes in Texas is, is that in Indiana, they have to hibernate. Right? Yes. In Texas, they don't have to do that. The temperature keeps them. They can stay right. active all year round. Here in Indiana, all these snakes have to hibernate, and that is a tough life for them, right? They have to feed. They have to mate. They have to do all this stuff very quickly in a very short amount of time before they have to be back into their habernaculums again to make it through another winter. So they right. have a, a, a kind of a strained life uh, living in such a, a diverse climate. Right. Okay, well, moving on to the next subject. Let's say somebody is walking down a trail here, and they... they have a chance encounter of a, of a snake what's their safety precautions oh just avoid it you know uh, if you see one let it go on its path leave it alone don't touch it take a picture of it if you'd like you know there, i was uh telling you before this interview if there was a timber rattlesnake right over uh, right over there i'd be excited yeah i'd be happy to see it i'd right. love to look at it but i would never think i'm gonna go pick it up i'm gonna go touch it do, do people do that uh, do people yeah, I mean, I think the, some, some of the bites that we've had are people that are taking a stick and, you know, poking at a snake. And where do they get bit? On their hand, yes. right? Because that's the one that's closest to the snake. They see heat. They're, all these snakes we have that are venomous in Indiana are pit vipers. Yes. So basically, they have a sixth sense that we don't have. They have these, these pit organs kind of between their nostrils and their eyes, and that helps them see... Uh, heat signatures, right? So they kind of see how we talk about the movie Predator from yes. back in the 80s and yes. that, where they, the Predator sees this heat moving through the woods. That's what they're seeing. They don't have very great eyesight. Okay. They can't really hear very well, right? So they're just seeing these heat signatures. So when that heat signature gets close enough to them, that's the thing they're going to bite. Wear the proper foot protection, right? Thank you very much, because that's something I have been preaching <laughs> yes. and preaching and preaching. Because, you know, the thing is, if you have sandals on, right, yes. you have pieces of your heat signature showing. Yes. Right? And those snakes are so accurate with their bite, they're going to hit you right between where the straps are. And they're going to try to hit your heat signature. Right? right. So if you've got thick, nice leather boots on... First of all, the copperhead can't bite through that leather. Right. right? And second of all, they're not going to see that heat signature, so they're not going to know where to bite. They're not going to have any target to bite. Right. Right. Now, what about people that are allowed, like hiking with their dogs? That seems to be a problem here. Yeah, so uh, make sure you keep your animals on a leash, a six-foot leash at that. Um, we see people sometimes with those really long leashes, right? You yes. 12-foot leash. Right. And that's, you know, your dog might enjoy that. But the problem is that means that your dog has gotten so far away from you that you couldn't see if it was coming in contact with a snake, right? Right. If you've got a six-foot leash, you at least can see what that dog is seeing. So if it comes across a snake, you can pull it back and say, hey, let's leave that right. thing alone, right? So One thing I've always preached to people is, is that if they get surprised by a snake and they're out in the woods, the first thing they do is stop. Mm -hmm. And they just stop and look around with your eyes and see if you can figure out where it is. Mm -hmm. And then once you figure it out, you can you can back away slowly. You can wait for it to crawl away because mm -hmm. they're not going to stand there and go, well, I'm going to stay here until I bite you. Yeah. So and one thing we have to remember about venomous snakes is, is that that venom doesn't last forever. It's not an infinite supply, right? They only have a certain amount at a time. And these snakes, it's funny because uh, when that video went viral with that big snake a couple years ago, that thing was huge and people said, oh, that's big, it could hurt someone. To be honest with you, that snake has a less potential to hurt you than its babies, okay? Yes. Because throughout their lives, venomous snakes learn how much venom it takes to kill things and they learn how much of a commodity that venom is they can't constrict their prey like all of our other constrictor snakes they can't do that right all they have is that venom and so they're going to give a mouse a mouse size amount of venom they're going to give a squirrel a squirrel size amount of venom. that's really interesting that's good to know yeah so <clears throat> yeah yeah okay 
Um, so in, uh, in closing here, I think the thing that I'm trying to get across to my people in Camping Indiana is, is that venomous snakes aren't that big of a problem here in Indiana. And if you do run across one, they're really easy to avoid. Yeah, I always say it's about as easy to avoid getting uh, bit by a snake as it is to avoid getting hit by a train. Right. Well, right. that reminds me. Of, that reminds <laughs> me of something. I've told people in Camping Indiana before that they're actually in more danger in their car on the way to the park. Because, Unfortunately, that's probably true. Well, it is. I yeah. mean, it's statistically just yeah. to, to look at the raw statistics for the million and a half people that come in here every year and the few that get bit versus the how many people get, you know, killed in their car or injured in their car or something like that. That they that they are more in more danger. Mm -hmm. in their car yeah and it's just it's just one of those things again i i will say before we end closing as a kid i was scared of snakes i grew up in the city i know what a fear of snake feels like i know that that's a thing and i get it uh, but you can learn to coexist with these guys now i am around snakes all the time i handle snakes i you know hook snakes and and so uh, you can overcome your fear and you can just be logical about it. Another good thing you can do when you're out hiking is if you see a log, these guys are ambush predators. They yes. sit on the side of a log yes. and they wait for a, a prey to run across that log, right? And so if, if you see a log, a downed log, look over it before you step over it, right? Because sometimes you might step right over that log and step on a snake. And that's when we get our bites. 90% of our bites we have here is because somebody stepped on the snake. Yes. Right? Okay. Well, Patrick, I certainly appreciate being yeah. out here today and uh, trying to get some of this information yeah. out so people aren't freaked out about mm -hmm. snakes. And I, mean, I get it. It's tough, I, I, I've gotten so many people that are like, oh my God, there's children dying at Brown County <laughs> State Park. And I'm like, we've not had that. I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and it's like, it's it's just crazy and yeah. so i am trying to stop the misconceptions here so, well thank you guys and i appreciate you doing that for us okay well that's a good thing to do and i guess we're guess we're done <laughs>